let's go. Butt left to bench pretty much every rep. Green lights everywhere, let's go. Oh, what is up YouTube? We are back with another day. We got max effort upper body day today. 15 rep maxes, praise the Lord, are done. We're to six rep maxes this week, uh, continuing that wave. Keep pushing, we got three plate bench. Um, so three plate elevated bench today. Lots of arms, should be a fun one. Um, Sorry, apologies on the delay in videos. My computer crashed with three days worth of videos on it, completely crashed uh, and had to like restart the whole computer and refresh everything. So no idea what happened there. It's my first time editing videos on this computer. So I don't know if it just got, couldn't handle it or what, but I have a um, SSD drive, like a portable drive for all the memory. So I'm not really sure what happened there. Computer's kind of old too. It's like four or five years old. So maybe it's just the end of the life, but I'm hoping that computer fixes itself. But usually I upload everything to computer edit the videos um, and then I'll upload them from there and uh, whole thing just completely crashed. So uh, we're a little behind on the videos, but um, we're gonna start over. This is Monday's video. We're gonna crush Monday today with this upper body day, but we missed um, a lower body workout and we missed the hit tracks tournament and hit tracks are in the swing is feeling mm, money. Swing is feeling really good. We're gonna go crush some balls outdoors again today. Probably get some of that filmed. Um, 60 degrees outside of Minnesota now, so starting to warm up here, get, get outdoors, get some cuts, but uh, yeah, swing's feeling really good. The lift on Friday was awesome. Had a concert this past weekend, that was amazing. And uh, yeah, we're rolling, ready to do this. So simple day today, tough day today, pumper of a day today, and we're gonna get a lot of sun today. We are gonna go for like a two hour walk today. If I can get you guys to do anything from these videos, it is implementing daily walks. Just walk, man, I'm telling you, it is the number one game changer. I was dragging a little bit this morning, went for a little walk around the building, just, just a little bit of sun, especially if you're in a northern area, just get a little bit of sun, a little bit of walk in. I feel like a new person right now. I'm not, not totally like jacked up, ready to go yet, but I just feel centered and pretty nice. So um, start walking and let's go lift, let's do it. All right, let's get ripping here. Three plate elevated bench, so 345s under the top of the bench. Uh, six are at max, should be nice and greasy. Let's do it. Then we got these band resisted uh, plow push-ups again. Instead of sticking at the bottom, we're just gonna drop, start at the top, um, drop to the bottom. So you got one rebound and then three pu uh, push-ups right away after that. So go here, make sure you, uh, you put up your hair. You got long hair if you do this one or it rips your hair apart. Found that out for a set. All right, here we go. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Woo. Then our uh, spine bending motion of the day. And this is one that's gonna be simple add it into pretty much any workout and just grabbing a wall. And there, there's so many different variations that you can do with this one. That's why this one's so beautiful. But so many times you just put an athlete on a wall and have them bend the spine with their hands on the wall. It feels amazing. They find so many different positions. So one of my favorite ones we'll do is we'll be basically wall parkour. And you're sitting here and you just gotta find for 30 seconds, different positions with the spine. Maybe you're bending all the way up and over. You're sitting in these positions. You go hand low hand high so you can play around there 30 seconds ish one minute ish there you can do 100 different variations on the wall um you can do wall walks you can sit here walking down the wall just like this rotating up and through the shoulder just like that you can work your way all the way through there um today we got a simple one uh just lateral side bends so we're gonna be here top hand here bend in as far as we can and then i'm gonna push against the wall this hand is where we're feeling stretch and push through the wall just like that. And then you can rotate and play around in this position here, just like this. But the wall is a really nice tool you can use for a lot of spine work. You can do wall walk downs, walk all the way down to the ground, come back up either in a back bend position or in this position, um, or front side too for a little bit of flexion, work it all the way down. Front side's not as cool, but the back side is definitely working your way all the way down going like that um but again we just got the lateral side bends these feel really really nice um again i like the wall as just a little bit of an anchor but then the feel something to push against so a lot of times when they're bending you really can't feel that stretch or you feel a little bit but just not nearly as much it was when you got that long lever and then you're pushing able to shove against it so this one feels money definitely recommend it Thank you. 
All right, set number two here, let's rip. Let's go. Whoa. So, um, one of our, uh, in the Discord, one of our athletes asked a question because he was worried about what his friends were doing for weights on the back squat. And he asked the questions, like basically, ask the grass squats versus um, full squats, or ask the grass squats versus uh, partial squats. And he was worried that he wasn't strong enough or producing enough power because he's seeing all these, um, his buddies do all these numbers on these like partial squats. And, uh, one of the things, and he basically was getting that pressure. Like he was getting the pressure to that he wasn't enough, that he wasn't performing enough, and that he needed to do more. And this is way more common than you would ever believe, especially with, with almost any athlete, is they get stuck in this not enough game. They, they see their, their teammates doing things that they, like, he's a smart enough athlete to where he knows there's a big difference between a partial squat and an ass grass squat in weight, right? So he knows cognitively there should be a difference in weight there. Uh, and then that is not actually strength, but one's just a full range motion, right? Um, but you get stuck in that pressure of, oh my God, am I doing enough? Am I not enough? You have these time frames that feel super short to you, these four year time frames the freshman to senior year of high school, the freshman to senior year of college, and then maybe after if you're super lucky. But those four year time spans feel super short. They feel like you need to do everything in the, right now to be able to make it, otherwise it's never gonna be enough. And this is where athletes really just need to slow down and realize you have four years. And for many of you, you have eight years to be able to become the athlete that you wanna become. And so many athletes try to rush and overbake this thing so quickly that they'll do things like going from those ass to grass squats to those quarter squats and not to say anything that's wrong with a quarter squat the only thing with this quarter squat is like you want to program it right away all right so when i program squats you're not doing quarter squats just to keep adding keep the ego up right so the so many athletes will switch from those those fundamental movement patterns from the things that will cook you and, and make you the athlete long term to get these short-term games these short-term dopamine hits and that's what you have to realize is that's all that is that that that, that is the negative of social media is you can see everybody's short-term dopamine hits you can see everybody's shortcuts you can see everybody highlights and you never get to see all of the days that went into creating a real highlight right creating the athlete you want to become the years and years and years and that that's where i'm super blessed that and when i when i was in high school there's so, no social media and it was literally just C program, do program that you were handed, right? That's all I did. I was, I was handed a program, I did a program, I did all the work, I got unbelievably strong from it. Um, I got crazy results and it's because I did it for four years religiously and it was only because I knew nothing else. If I, if I had social media, if I had the access I had now, I would have been program hopping like a motherfucker and as soon as I got access to social media, I program hopped like a motherfucker. Like as soon as I, it was like sophomore, junior year of college and I started getting all this information and I understand it, like I get it, but as soon as I got there, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not doing enough. And I was making gains, I was doing all these things, I was like, oh my God, I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing enough. And that's not to say never question things, right? But it is to say there is a piece to just trusting the program in front of you, trusting the work that you need to do and understanding you have time if you utilize that time. Because what happens so many times with these athletes is they will start, again, the, the quarter squat versus full range of motion squat is just a perfect argument. Like they'll start switching to a partial squat to uh, like, just let's just say the parallel squat. They'll start switching to a parallel squat to keep up with their buddies. And then the only way to add weight is, okay, now I gotta do uh, above parallel squat. And then I gotta do a uh, quarter squat. And then, I, or a three, two, a three, four squat. And then I gotta do a quarter squat and you keep, eliminating range of motion, keep eliminating stimulus to continue on this linear journey that you think it is. And so many athletes would just be so much better off just long-term cooking your program, long-term trusting in what you need to trust in. And what you see, what will happen is your ass to grass squat, and this is, this is what I told Matt, your ass to grass squat will be their partial squat, right? Your ass to grass PR will be their partial squat PR. Uh, same thing with like recovery days. Your, your, recovery day will be their full workout. Your warm-up 
will be their wor their workout. Like the things that you do in your work at warm up are going to be so intense it would be an entire workout for them, right? That is the level of stimulus you are building up to as an athlete. That is the level of stimulus you need to build up to as an athlete if you want to become who you want to become, if you want to become that freak. And so many athletes are just going for this quick hitting super fast response to things and I need to do this, I need to post that, I need to, I need, I need to become this thing. Um, and they spend those four years just circling, just really doing nothing other than getting quick dopamine hits. So if there's one piece of advice I can give athletes, it's just slow down, you have the four years, buy program, trust program, run it religiously. Buy a good program, obviously, but run it religiously for four years watch the athlete that you become. Watch, just, just, just watch. Take photos, day one. Write your numbers down, day one. Write your numbers down in year four. Take the photo in year four. And you will be a totally different human when you're not chasing these things, right? Your warm up will be their entire workout. Your ass to grass squat can be their entire partial squat, right? You'll be benching for reps, what they're, they're dreaming of benching for one, okay? So long-term, Goals, long-term progress, long-term cook it yourself. Give yourself that respect. No more dopamine hits. You can get dopamine hits left and right, and that's why I try to include them in the pro program too and giving you little wins and everything like that. But I just think a lot of times when you get stuck in that chasing game, you get stuck in that, and, and all athletes do it because all athletes want to win, um, you get stuck in that scarcity mindset game for athletics, you're playing a losing game. You're playing a cycle game. You're playing the game everybody else plays. And when you play that game, you become just like everybody else. And then the cream of the top that just had the genetics rise and the athletes that don't have the genetics just collapse, right? They're, just, they're surviving despite of their training, not because of it, right? Don't get lost in the sauce. If you want to be different, train different, right? And different right now is just the most basic things, which is buying a program and running a program. It doesn't have to be insane, okay? So let's get after it. Let's do it. Six rep max here. Sponsored by Ghost. Can't miss it. Here we go. Come on. Come on. left the bench pretty much every rep green lights everywhere let's go then last set here just adding a couple more reps with the slingshot hit a good real little six rep max there that was a banger felt um I, I wanted to mention this um the strength level felt good on those especially for a three plate incline it felt good but there's definitely a calibration a calibration piece that comes to lifting heavy weights um so coming from the 15 rep max is into a little bit of a six rep max things feel just a little bit heavier. It's almost like a weird, like I said, like calibration, like you have to figure out how to, how to hold it again, how to stabilize everything. Um, so typically it takes two-ish weeks to get back to where you're really grooving, increasing those things. So that's why I like to keep the set uh, and rep schemes the same for two weeks. So we'll do six reps for the next two weeks, 15 reps for those two weeks, just because a lot of times it does take a week to get that calibration piece. So everything felt strong there, but it felt heavy, if that makes sense. It's a weird, weird description where I didn't feel like I was ever going to get absolutely bodied by that way. But as soon as I picked it up on ramp one, it felt heavy. Whereas if I'm ripping a bunch of singles, um, a lot of times the weight will feel light and then I could still get bodied from it. So just a piece there. Uh, we're going to hit uh, six reps here with the slingshot. We added 10 pounds on there and uh, keep rolling. I was losing that slingshot on the right arm or sliding down. Almost got absolutely ripped there. Let's go. Keep ripping. Come on, baby. Woo! Good day. All right, then we're going to rate these single arm handstand uh, isos. Uh, so we're just picking up one hand, single arm handstand. I'll kind of move you when we get there. But I was thinking about this. I really did not want to do these handstand isos. Really, really wanted to skip them. I got uh, and like started to develop reasons in my head of why I should skip them, right? So uh, again, elbow doesn't feel that amazing. You got all the swings later today, all this stuff, all this stuff, right? And it's so silly because handstand ISO is literally the thing that I need to be doing for my elbow. Things like that, like the locked out position, building up the tendon ligament in that hand, getting a functioning shoulder and elbow, like all these things. 
but it really made me think about like when people buy programs. It's like everybody buys the program that they want to buy, right? Like it's always like you want to buy that program. It's brand new, it's shiny, it's sexy, you want to do it. And almost all of the time, the thing that you want to do is not the thing that you probably should be doing. It's kind of like a weird psychology because we trick ourselves into doing things we are good at, things we enjoy. Uh, but things you are good at, things you enjoy, you're already good at them. That's why you enjoy them for the most part. It's not all the time the case, but a lot of times the reason that you enjoy doing something, the reason you enjoy running programs, is because you're already good at those things, right? So uh, I'm really, really good at squatting. So I'm going to love a squat program where it has me doing a ton of squats because I'm really, really good at that. And if you have that mentality, and this is especially as an athlete, like I, I'm getting to a point where like I enjoy the challenge of sucking at something. I thoroughly enjoy that a variability approach. There's not a ton that gets me going other than like sucking at something and then trying to get better at something really quick. But when I was an athlete, that absolutely was not the case. When I was an athlete, it was again, you get stuck in that scarcity mindset. You don't feel like you don't have enough time. And then you feel you just trick yourself into, oh, I'm doing all these good things in training. You're just doing the things that you're already good at. Um, and you're just showing them. You're showcasing. You're not training. You're showcasing. Um, you're showcasing those things and you're not doing the things you should be doing. So if you really want to know the program that you should be on, you really want to know the things you should be doing in your program, the, the missing exercise, the magic link, it's the thing you don't want to do. It's the thing that you absolutely suck at. It's the thing you skip in every single workout. I program a ton of neck stuff in the, in the workouts. I program a ton of ISOs in our workouts. And again, I'm nobody's babysitter, but you know what the athletes skip? A lot of neck stuff, a lot of ISOs, right? So it's like, that's the stuff they need to be doing. It's, it's not, the, they never skip the arms. They'll, you, they'll never skip the arms. They'll, they'll uh, They'll find time all day to do arm workouts in here. But uh, every time we have an ISO or a neck, it's like, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, I got, I got work, all these things. So it's just, it's just that little reminder that, that this mental toughness thing that we talk about many times is you just giving yourself a continual dopamine hit for doing things that you're good at. And that a lot of times keeps you further away from your goal than you need to be. Your goal can be reached if you just accept that you suck at something and find enjoyment at that suckage and enjoyment in the process of not sucking at that thing anymore. But if you continue to run your head into the walls of doing things that you're good at over and over again, you're gonna continue to be good at them. And good is good, good is okay, man. But you wanna rip that exponential gain, you wanna take that next step, do the thing you really don't wanna do. Do the thing that you suck at and watch it happen. And I think it applies to us coaches as well, our, us business people, right? So we get to a point, let's say it's social media. Social media is a great example. I can write all day. I can do memes all day. Not even memes. Memes are a new thing for me. But let's say I could do long form posts all day and continue to do the thing that I'm good at. I know how to do that. Where's the next step? How, how long are we going to stay good at the long form content? How long are we going to stay on that path of just good enough, right? Fuck that. Let's do memes. Let's see how those do. Let's do some short form content. Let's see how those do. Let's see how we do YouTube videos. Let's record ourselves every single day talking in front of the camera. I just feel like Coaches will agree with this message, right? The coaches say, yeah, get our athletes to do hard things. And then the coach that's watching isn't doing the hard things. They're doing the things they're comfortable with. They're doing the things they're used to. So if you want to see a ton of growth in your athletic development, you want to see a ton of growth in your life, go do something you're very uncomfortable doing. Go do something that you know you probably should be doing, but you absolutely suck at, so you're not doing it. A lot of times the things you enjoy, a lot of times the things you're actually pursuing, the things that you want are things you're already good at and you know you can obtain. You want to reach that next level. You want to evolve as a person. You want to evolve as an athlete. You want to evolve as a coach. You got to actually evolve. You got to shed the skin of the old person, shed the skin of the things that you're good at because you're always going to be good at those and go do the things that you suck at and take your game to the next level. So all that to be said, let's hit this handstand ISO and I'm just going to move you back. I'm going to show you I'm not bullshitting. I'm not bullshitting. Let's go right here. We got one minute. Single. Oh, is that too high? Where's my hand? My hand's down on the ground. I got to bump you back a little bit more. Here we go. I got a little fired up there, man. Let's go. I like those rants when I feel, when I feel, uh, feel lost in the sauce. That's when I know it's a, it's a decent rant. So we're going to go one minute handstand ISOs here, just like this for funsies. Oh. Picking these up. We got one minute total, just like this. Holding for as long as we can, then we'll switch. One minute total time. So on these ISOs, I probably shouldn't talk through the whole time, but on these ISOs, whenever you need a break, you just stop the timer or you switch hands and you just get your cumulative time in until you can hold it straight. Whew.
Oh, yeah, let's go. Boom. So hit another set of those to finish up the time. Got 30, 30, and then we'll go. One more set. Let's go. Good. And then a little uh, shoulder care for the day, if you could call it that. 100 reps, plate circles. So five to 2.5 pound plate here. Uh, just big circles, a little bit of a dynamic stretch through that joint. Get the trap going. Shoulder feels nice and loosey-goosey when you're done. Um, nice and relaxed here. You can even do these with body weight if you don't got anything. I like the weight because it feels like it slingshots it through. We just got 100 of these. Big swing. It's not a muscle movement. You know, trying to, a lot of times you'll, when you guys will do this, especially if they're stiffer, they'll work it like a lateral raise and then work it down, let it swing. Let that weight swing, just like this. Get a lot of trap, pump going. A little hidden trap pump, right? 100 of these, nice and easy. Once you get done with this way, you'll come back and you'll hit them this way. Again, you wanna get really good overhead? Even if you don't wanna get a good overhead, you're gonna have to be required to go overhead in life. Do a lot of stuff overhead, 100 reps here. That's a spicer, baby. All right, other arm. Really try to keep that arm straight, not bend it here. I almost just off myself doing that, but a lot of times they'll keep tension. I know, not an amazing job, but I think a lot of stuff like this too allows you to uh, release a little bit of tension, feel what it feels like to be long, loose, rhythmic, not using the muscle for everything, not forcing everything. Um, specifically in things like, uh, I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but hammer throwing and, uh, um, a baseball swing, you can really see it. The best hitters are never like tense and squeezed. It's relaxed arms, long and whip through, right? So just like this. It's not that we're doing it for sports, but sports specificity, Spe specificity. Uh, that's, a, that's not how you say that word. A little confused right now, but it's not that we're doing it for that. It's just, I think anytime you can get an athlete to feel things we want them to feel, the better. All right, so a couple more sets of those. Finish up the handstands, then we got the neck. Let's go. All right, and then just a little neck care for the week. We got a little neck bridge here. We got backwards and forward, 30 second hold here. So come up in the neck bridge here, just like this. Hold it in this position. Get a nice little angle here. Then we're just rocking back and forth. Find a position you suck at in there and hold that baby. Maybe hold here. If you're really bad at these, you can put hands on the ground to take some tension off. Um, just hold like that. But if you have that wrestling background, usually you're pretty solid. Here, this one feels really nice, 30 seconds. And then when we're done with that side, we'll flip over, wait we'll front side here, just like this. Up and down, almost in a bear crawl position here. Ah, ate it, dang. All right, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, again, adding in neck stuff two times a week, one time a week even if you're an office person, um, two, two to three times a week if you're an athlete, but it makes you feel so much better. Um, traps get a sweet pump from it, neck gets a sweet pump, you look bigger. Um, so if you're a meathead out there, it's a good thing for uh, you to do as well. Especially like bodybuilders, man. Um, start doing some neck training, you can add some serious size. Um, just because a lot of times they don't work it at all. Um, so again, going from shit to suck to something can make some big progress there. But keep ripping the arms, let's do it. All right, so these were just supposed to be normal single arm bent over rows, but I already had that band set up. So we're doing band resisted bent over rows, single arm. Absolute gas, bro. This is one of my favorite barbell rows I've done in a while. Now that pull down, you definitely do some drop catch variations here with that band where it gets sucked down, pull in. I was just doing a little bit of those in the last set just for funsies, but yeah, these are these are for sure a keeper. So we're gonna be bent over here, picking this baby up, and we're rowing. Yeah, let's go. We got some bops on the tunes today. God damn. Then continually ripping these uh, laying uh, prone curls. We got two plates elevated here. Feel like money. Keep juicing them until the biceps stop growing. All right? So here we go. Eight of them. Oof. 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 Oh. 
eight. Oh yeah, that was a good set. Man, Woo. 25s were uh, eight to nine-ish RP on those curls. Those are about 10, bumped it up to 30. Let's go, keep ripping. We got these tricep um, fall throughs, I guess, tricep extensions, triceps inverted row. I guess you could technically call them. It's in the inverted row position. You're inverting the tricep row there. Um, but these are money, man. I really like this, uh, the body weight. The more, I think a lot of times, the gymnastic type movements that you can do for hypertrophy reasons, a lot of times the athletes feel way better doing them. Um, they suck way less at them, or suck way, suck way more at them. So the progress is way faster. Um, and there's just a weird thing about how the gymnastic movements challenge the muscle in a different way, um, or it connects a couple things to where you get some really cool, this is, again, this is bro science right here. This is probably the broiest we're gonna go, but really cool striations through the body when you start building through gymnastic type movements versus when you start building through uh, bodybuilding type movements. Again, I'm not saying one or the other is better, but I think for athletes, a lot of times they like these more and you get some pretty nasty hypertrophy from them, um, like deep muscles that you didn't notice. A lot of times, same thing with climbing, like your hands will get muscles you didn't know you had, your lats and back will get muscles you didn't know you had. Same with a lot of these gym gymnastics type movements. Handstand's a really basic one too. You get forearms and triceps, so you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Um, and it's just working in a different way. So again, pretty bro -y there, but once you feel them, it's hard to explain in a different way. Like you feel, um, I did the first set of these, it's triceps all the way into that lat, just on fire in a deep, deep way. Um, that felt amazing. So no more bro signs, 15 of these here. Hands together, rolling through, triceps point the wall, come back up. Oh, wow, that triceps already sore. Oh, whoa, let's go, man. Oh, those feel good. The last thing we got, we just got these uh, plate pinch tur Turkish get ups here. Um, more just flowing the hips, moving, getting up and off the ground, get a little bit of grip work, a little bit of shoulder work, um, but nothing super intense here. Um, just was trying these variations out, honestly, probably not keeping this variation. It's nice getting up and off the ground, but you really can't load it up enough to, uh, you could do it with a barbell, but um, to make it a challenging get up variation, but that's not to say it's total garbage. Um, again, you get some, some hips in there, but again, sometimes you try variations and you're like, oh, this one's probably, probably not a keeper and that one falls into this category. So just getting up and off the ground. We've got eight of these total, switching the hands at four. Uh, what about a crisscross applesauce get up? I'm gonna have in here. Boom. All right, just like that. Let's say goodbye and get out of here. All right, that's a day. And we got 6% battery on our camera left. So that's, that's pretty good timing on my part if I do say so myself. I got some new uh, squat pants coming in the mail. So we'll be ripping those tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. Um, but yeah, pretty good day. Again, it's 60 degrees outside. Uh, gonna be pushing maybe 70. I thought I saw 65 this week. Um, so I'm gonna get out in the sun. I'm going to enjoy myself. Uh, got a concert tonight again, a little bit more chill concert. Um, I know I go to a lot of concerts, but I really find a lot of like spiritual practice in a concert. Like I, I just, I, I get very centered, very grounded in music. Um, I, I think it's uh, one of the, like when, when you look at old practices of church, a lot of it was based around music. This is gonna get weird. This is a weird kind of thought process to talk about here. We probably won't go as deep as I'd like to, but um, yeah, when you, when you look at old practices of church, it was community and music together and a lot of music that brought people together. It's almost like a, like a concert nowadays, right? Um, so I think if you find the right environment for a lot of those things, you can really get a ton of spiritual practice out of what the church used to be, I would should say. I um, mean, that's not to say that all churches are dead, but um, I just think a lot of times people look at a concert and throw it out as like party animals, like people just doing a lot of drugs and like people throwing away their lives. And there are a lot of people like that out there. I will give it to you. I, I see a lot of those people. Um, but I also see a lot of people where they get a ton. It is their church. They get a ton. I, I don't want to say that's my church. I want to go that far. But I know a lot of people where it's their community, their church, and they get a lot of healing from it. And, um, and I feel like I get a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say healing, but a lot of that spiritual feeling, a lot of deep, intrinsic, 
like connectedness that um, I don't feel in a lot of other places. So I like to capitalize on that. Um, and I like to go in those places and I feel like I'm a better person in those places and especially after those places. And it just also brings me out of the strength conditioning world and the seriousness of, of all of this where it's really not that serious and it makes you realize that when you have a bunch of people wearing mushroom suits like dancing around you to this awesome music and just having a great time and they have no idea what the fuck uh, we're arguing about when we talk about Olympic lifts versus like unilateral lifts. And I just think it's a really cool experience. I think a lot of people would do well to break out of their own shell and um, yeah, just not judge as much with uh, some of these things. Cause I, I am saying that as a person that is 100% judged, especially when I was in college, I was like, oh, you're just going to a concert. Like uh, again, throwing away your life, like just waste. Like what are you doing? Lazy, uh, partying, all these things. And there's so many people that go there that aren't even like, they're not doing anything. It's just the music themselves. And that'll be tonight too for me. Um, so uh, looking forward to that little weird rant there, but um, Tomorrow we'll be back with legs, we'll hit some sprints, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So hopefully we get a little bit better night to sleep from tonight, but we have the concert, so maybe not. It starts at 8, so I'm hoping it's done by like 10. That's such an old person thing to say, but hopefully it's done by 10, and then we get in bed, and we got a 6 a.m. session tomorrow, so we're not completely trashed for legs, but if we are, we keep crushing. We follow the program, we buy the program, and we do the program to a T. So let's rip it, let's do it, boom.